Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. As you can see by the titles under our faces, I'm John Coleman, and with me is my business partner, co founder of Celebrating Act Two, Art Kirsch. Art, Hello. How are you? Good to see you again, John. Now, Art. You're of a certain age. Your body is changing. Did you know your body is changing? I didn't know. I think I'm still like an 18-year-old, just a hunk. Oh, no, I mean, Excuse really me. a hunk. Your body, your body was changing at 18. Too. Oh yeah, you didn't, that's that's you don't true. Remember. No, I don't. You don't remember. I don't remember. But the fact is that as we grow older, our bodies change, and when we hit that magic age of 50, that certain point, or maybe earlier, or yeah, maybe later, before. our bodies change again. Now you knew that. I did. I did. I was just fun in you. <laughs> because you've experienced it. I know. Yep. So that's why I'm excited to meet the guest that you've arranged for today, Dr. Liz. I'm, I've, you've, tell me more about Dr. Liz. Who is she? Why are, we, why are we talking to her? Well, I've known our next guest, Dr. Liz Lister, for 30 years. Uh, Dr. Liz is an OBGYN, a medical okay. doctor, best-selling okay. author, speaker, and expert in perimenopause and menopause. Excuse me? Perimenopause per and menopause. Per nothing to do with submarines. We'll get there. Okay. <laughs> okay. In her private practice in San the San Francisco Bay Area, right. she helps women and men in midlife and beyond lose weight, have more energy, increase their motivation and drive and generally feel great. Good. I need all of those things. And she didn't just pick this up on her own and throw the word doctor in front of it. She graduated from Cornell University, Impressive. went to medical school at UC Irvine. UC yeah. Irvine went to medical school. Irvine, good. Yeah. And in addition to all that, then she went ahead and got a master's degree at UCLA in community health education. Plus being a medical doctor, right? Uh, yep. Eight years or whatever it is. Oh, my Lord. Yes. Talk about educated. Well, she, she, she likes that stuff. Anyway, and we're lucky that she does because, but her specialty of perimenopause and menopause, which you're going to learn about, yeah, okay, oh when she turned 50 a couple of years ago, she celebrated by climbing to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, which wow. for your purposes, uh, John, is in Africa. It's not in, it's not in New Jersey. It's in every movie. That's but all I know. It's in the movies. Yeah. Uh, she has uh, two adult sons, enjoys hiking, and Argentine dancing with her uh, husband. So with that, wow. I'd like to introduce you to... Very impressive. Dr. Liz Lister. Dr. Liz, welcome. Thank you. I was delighted to be you with have, you. What a CV, as they say. Wow. Mount Kilimanjaro at 50. What made you do that? I wanted to be sure that I didn't hit 50 with the same anxiety that I hit 40 with. I was not very happy about getting approaching turning 40. Luckily, I had a good friend who persuaded me to celebrate turning 40. And then turning 40 was great. So I decided to take 50 into my own hands, make some plans. And I've been doing that ever since then. That was uh, almost five years ago. It was a lot of fun. There's a few years leading up to that. Making sure I enjoy hiking. That was important. <laughs> Figured that out a few years before turning 50. And, uh, and then making plans for a really spectacular trip. It was a great experience. Well, that's a great way to turn 50, to start the second half of your life. And yeah. you know this Celebrating Act 2 is about we're the user guide for the second half of your life, arguably. Yeah. 50 is the beginning of the second half of your life. So yes. did you feel that, did you feel at turning 50 was the beginning of the second half of your life or not? Yes, no, I another? did. I really did. I absolutely did. It's been since turning 50 that my kids are launching and uh, all of my own professional activities are kind of gelling and I'm, I can concentrate more on, on what I'm up to and what I want the second half to, to do. Yeah, and you're helping people, as Art explained, you're helping people um, live the, to their fullest yes. at any age. Yeah, as a matter of fact, on your website, uh, I think you break down stages to like the 20s and 30s and 40s, 50s. Tell us about what those general groupings mean, if you would, and uh, the kind of changes uh, that people experience. Sure, absolutely. 
I'll tell them to be a little bit out of order because people know them a little bit out of order. So typically by around age 50 is when women go through the more noticeable changes that we call the change or menopause. All right, and that's when we completely stop having our period. And so that's kind of a clearly defined change, at least for women. Now, there's this other stage that you talked about, and well, you mentioned perimenopause, which a lot of people haven't necessarily even heard of, or they don't know how long it lasts. It can be up to 10 or more years before women go into menopause. So that's why I group 40s and 50s together. So Liz, how, how long is menopause, actual menopause? It depends who you ask what the definition is. I personally use the definition of menopause as a woman is done having her period. She's gone a whole year, one whole year, 12 whole months without her period. And now she's in menopause, okay. in menopause or post menopause. I personally use those words interchangeably. So, so the menopause itself might be defined as a very narrow one, two year period but perimenopause is at 10 years of hot flashes. Exactly. Perimenopause leading up to menopause. Yeah. And then menopause, the way I use it, John, is from then on. Yeah. Right? Interesting. So basically the second half. The way we talk about the second half, I I use the term menopause for that. Some people say post-menopause. However, I like to just make it simple and refer to that as being in menopause. Now you started to say, I think, started to say the men go through something similar, but it's not called menopause. Exactly. It's, it's, that's, that's right. That's a great transition to why do I group 20s and 30s together? Is because typically in our 20s, things work really well. Everything's firing on all cylinders. We can talk more about that in a little bit. But then at around in our 30s is when things start to change hormonally. The difference is that most people don't realize that the hormone levels are already changing. And this is the case for, for you men, all right? Men start to have declining testosterone levels starting at age 30. Wow. Yeah. That's, 30? that's a new one on me. Most of the guys wait till 30. I'm so ahead of the game. <laughs> by the by the way, is that like this guy Frank, this uh, San Diego baseball guy, is on TV all the time talking about a testosterone replacement? Was that the kind of stuff? Oh exactly, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's a major, major hormone for men. We, we can get, get into more of those details, details if we have time and if we want to in a little bit. However, testosterone, that's the major hormone for men that helps you feel great, helps with energy, mood, mental sharpness. It helps with so many aspects of feeling really good. Does testosterone actually help the sexual function in Absolutely, men? absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah, you bet. It helps in women as well. A lot of people don't realize that women have testosterone as well. So the our, our levels start declining as well. However, for you guys, your testosterone level specifically starts to go down one to two percent every single year starting at age 30. Wow. Now you're as a medical doctor uh, when you talk about uh, hormone therapies and things like that they really have uh, could have profound effects so it depends on an entire uh, mm -hmm. uh, medical uh, workup on somebody in order to not do the wrong thing or are these things pretty harmless uh, whether people have heart conditions or diabetes and things like that. What's all that interaction about? Oh, uh, there's so much interaction because, okay, so first of all, I sometimes refer to hormones as the H word because you say the word hormones and people's <laughs> eyes kind of roll up in their head. They feel like you're putting them back in, I don't know, high school biology class or something traumatic, but really hormones are so important. Are They're the messengers they bathe our whole body, especially when we're young, we're in our 20s. Remember age 20, stay up all night, pull an all-nighter, eat crappy food, and the next day you could function really well. You remember that? Oh, we were, boy. I, I remember. remember. I remember, right? I remember yes. I remember yes. Cramming for exams. Exactly. Yeah. And because our bodies were bathed in our hormones, head to toe, you know, no joint pain, no body aching, work out at the gym, and do a great workout and feel good and get and results. maybe and maybe a hangover here or there, but maybe really. here and there, but not much. 
not compared to what is visible. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's and amazing. Yeah. Because of hormonal vigor, vigor. Hormon, just just great, great hormonal, hormonal levels in our whole bodies. bodies. And, and so, so everything, everything you just mentioned, mentioned all, all the health issues, issues that happen, happen to us as, as we get, get older, older go along with those predictable patterns. patterns. And then there's one area that really gets under my skin, and that's when people, especially women, get into their 30s and definitely into our 40s, and we start to have issues with sleep, sleep disruption, mood changes, and women are given what I call Band-Aid drugs, like put a Band-Aid on it, which is a sleeping pill or a birth control pill or an antidepressant. And when women realize, wait a minute, I'm not depressed. That's not what's happening here. That's when they go past their regular doctor and then they end up coming to see me. That's kind of how that that stepwise fashion goes. Right, right. So um, when when you uh, advise patients, uh, do they have to make uh, appointments and have extensive visits or uh, are there other ways that they can uh, work with you? Because there are obviously people all over the country uh, that would be interested in this. And uh, I assume that you're in a sort of a, a pretty narrow field that there, that there aren't that many experts in, in, uh, in uh, what you're doing. Yes, yeah, definitely a growing field, but right now it's still not easy to find a practitioner. However, so what I'm working on is I have a, an online community and I love to welcome people into that so people can sign up to be part of my newsletter community. And that way, as I, I already work virtually with patients as well. Most patients come to see me initially, and then we can work after that on the phone or Skype or, or Zoom calls. So that's not hard to do in today's day and age after we get you started on whatever your personal program is for feeling better. That's interesting because today, after all, people are ordering drugs online. They're doing, and, and to get uh, certain drugs, you have to meet a doctor online to get the prescription online, yeah. and then they get delivered by Amazon. I mean, it is a virtual world, isn't it? It sure is. It sure yeah. is. And, and doctors, generally speaking, don't have time to listen to people. You know, they might have eight, ten minutes to talk with you, and right. that's part of the problem. That's partly why the doctors go to give a Band-Aid instead of taking the time, my visits with patients last anywhere from 45 minutes up to an hour and a half. Oh, boy. It takes wow. time. That's well, great. Hey, John, this That's is right. better than going to a psychiatrist. <laughs> you only it get 32 like minutes, that. right? Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> so so, so let's, 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 let's jump, jump forward to what, what I care about, which is yeah. that, that third group, that uh, 50s and 60s or 60s and better group, um, because if our hormones are changing in our 30s, what a thought, I never knew that, um, and let's say women feel it more, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, women feel their hormone changes earlier than men, we're, we're less aware of it, maybe because nobody told us well, maybe that Maybe we're off. afraid to talk about it. And, well, well of, of course, course we're not right. going to talk about it, that's, that's not, that's irrelevant. Right, not um, manly. <laughs> but, but do women... Do, do men actually go through this hormonal change at a greater degree later than men, uh, later than women? Great question. That's such a great question. Here's how I describe it, John, is that men go through it more gradually. Ah. That's the important difference. Women go through it. I mean, there's an entire musical, right? Menopause, the musical, which is very hilarious, by the way. Yes. I finally yes. got to see it recently. And women are having hot flashes and night sweats. And those are the more obvious, you know, most doctors will recognize those symptoms as, yes, related to hormones, related to the menopause. However, for men, it's more gradual. So I talk about the story of the boiling frog. Do you guys know the, bo the boiling sure. frog? Yeah. yeah. I, exactly. But I don't, John. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't know the story. I can I tell don't. you really briefly, because it's not a pretty story. Basically, if you take a frog and you toss it into boiling water, it will jump out, right? Frogs can jump on water surface, sure. they can jump out. However, if you take the same frog, you put it in room temperature water and you slowly heat the water, it will not realize what's happening and it won't jump out until it's too late. Yep, the water's boiling and he hasn't jumped so out. So are yet. guys yeah. basically frogs? 
<laughs> Is that what you're saying? Well, well you, you know, know what, what they, they say, kiss a lot of frogs. frogs. <laughs> Exactly. exactly. All, All right. right. So, so we're, we're talking about frogs. frogs. At least it's, it's not, not that way. Frogs, frogs are good. Yes. However, what's happening is a lot of people don't realize the symptoms mm. that are related to these changes right. because they're so gradual. So a lot, a lot of men don't, don't realize that. that. Until typically, a lot of the men that I see are from women encouraging them, bringing them in, and saying, you know, you need to get checked out. It's probably related to your hormones. Mm-hmm. On rare occasion, I see men who were able to get their doctor to recognize that it's related to testosterone and check their testosterone level. And then what happens is something that happens to most of my patients, which is the level's barely inside the bottom of the range, and they're told they're fine. Before uh, uh, before, before we uh, end, though, uh, is there hope? Uh, for uh, yes. for men as well as we're, we're interested in men, of course, and and women, yes. our women, yes. I, our yes. wives. Is there hope? Is there therapies that can actually make us feel a lot better? Uh, because most guys don't look for it, and and women just put up with it. You know, that's what that's what we see as a normal basis. How do you uh, how do you uh, measure success uh, with people? Is it is it uh, pretty universal? Yes, so I measure success with people really feeling good with whatever the symptoms are that they're noticing that's impairing their quality of life, whether it's less energy or slower metabolism or foggy brain or or short temper, any of those, I like to see all of that really clear up and people really be able to feel great. I'm so glad that you asked it that way because most people think that replenishing hormones is dangerous, and that is not the case. Now, Liz, even though it may not be dangerous, everything has side effects. Are there are there not some downside to uh, hormone replacement therapy? Thank you for asking the question in that way, because we're going to separate health risks from side effects. Mm. Ah, so the okay. answer is yes. Sometimes there can be side effects. For example, for women with a little bit of testosterone replenishing, in my medical opinion and my review of all of the science, there is essentially zero health risk for women to replenish testosterone. They can have side effects. They can have a little bit, maybe a little bit of facial hair or maybe a little bit of skin breaking out. That can happen initially for women, for example. However, they might feel great again. They might have libido again. They might have clear thinking and calm mood, which is so beneficial for the entire family and their relationship that a lot of times we're just going to be weighing those side effects against the benefits, but also those side effects tend to, it it tend to clear up. Good, good point. Good point. Yeah, for a lot, it's even better news because of course, there's rarely any side effects. Sometimes men can get a little bit of skin breaking out, that sort of thing. Again, the side effects can be controlled, but the benefits are, it's just such a long list. I get so excited when people feel better. They, they didn't know they could feel that much better. Now, what about, uh, if I could ask about the 60s and better, uh, are the hormones, are you, are you all done with this stuff by 60s or 65 or so? We, John, we have what I call a modern problem, which is how long we live now. Oh, boy. That's a problem I like. Exactly. (laughs) It's a really good problem. It's a modern problem. Did you know that 200 years ago, women lived, only 5% of women lived to age 50? Really? Wow. Isn't that shocking? Yeah. Now half of us can expect to be into our 80s. Most of us can expect to live way, way longer than that. And we want to feel ways that it it doesn't matter before. We we weren't living that long. It didn't matter. You know, now we're in our 50s, 60s and better. And we want our marriages to be happy. We want intimacy and we want good body function in our relationships. We want to feel good. We want our metabolism to behave. So I call it the modern problem. Yeah. Well, yeah, at, that's there's so many things that we'd like to cover with you, but um, 
how can our in the meantime till we have you back how can uh, our uh, uh, audience find out more information about what you do and how to possibly contact you absolutely my website is the very best way i want everybody listening to join me join what we're up to with celebrating Act Two and making the second half be rockin' awesome. My website is drlizmd, D-R-L-I-Z-M-D.com. I have a newsletter, please sign up for it because I am committed to educating and writing articles about cutting edge information. I've got blogs going back several years on my website. I love your blogs, by the way, Dr. Liz, really yeah. very good. Thank you. So I'm, I'm delighted to include everybody in that in my online community going forward. And you do public speaking, no doubt. You've absolutely. you've got books, so you must be out there. Yes, the absolutely. Yeah, this is my newest book. This one just came out in 2019 and went bestseller. Oh, hold it right in front of your face so we can see it. Right. Go for great. There you go. And can great. people find a link to that on your uh, on your yeah. website? Great. Yes, this is on Amazon. It's on my website. You can get a signed copy through my website. Mostly, I'm just excited to share with everyone all of okay. the topics that we've been talking about so that people don't settle for just getting older or just have to accept not feeling your best. Just, do you, do you like that word, just? That's a, that's that's a, a problem. Word. If I could get rid of one word, it would be the J word, just. <laughs> oh, the J word. Just Dr. Liz yeah. and the J word. Great. Great. Well, Liz, I hope we'll have you back. I, we've got Thank this you. is a topic that you could explore well for a whole career like yours. Exactly. So I, I hope you'll join us again. Um, and we've yeah. learned a lot, learned a lot, including about the H and the J word. That's right. Exactly. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, uh, Dr. Liz. My pleasure. And look forward to speaking to you in the future. And John, do you want to sign off to our audience? Uh, sure. This is our sign off to our audience. <laughs> we don't have an official sign off, Dr. Liz. So okay. We make it up every time. I'll play some music out at the end. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, Liz, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank You're you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.